Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting stories. The first one is about Hari Chupan, who just confirmed that he's not gonna be doing the Arnold Classic in 2025. Now, should we say that he's out? Did he even say that he was gonna compete? I don't know how many of you guys actually remember, but I remember after winning the Arnold Classic, he did promise to Arnold himself that he was gonna be there next year as well, just after Arnold announced that the next year's prize is going to be up to half a mil. But he is not gonna do what he said, unfortunately, for us, for fans, but for him, this is probably a good thing. Now, I gotta say, this was actually posted by multiple uh, Instagram bodybuilding uh, news pages, but originally it was reported by the Persian Genetics Instagram page, and so far it hasn't been disputed by Hadi or Hani, so yeah, I'm sure this is accurate, he probably said it in some uh, uh, interview in Persian, we can't understand it, but this page uh, posted it, and apparently the reason is the fact that he wants to focus on the Mr. Olympia 2025, which, again, makes a lot of sense, I already spoke about this. If Hari Chopin looked at a Mr. Olympia the way he looked at the Arnold Classic, I think he would have won. I mean, I don't want to say that because I like Samson's physique way more, but if you look at the scorecard, it was a tie at the pre-judging, and then Samson won the finals by three points. And at the Arnold Classic Ohio, it was a perfect win for Hari. So if Hari was... 100%, which he was at the Arnold Classic, he was way more conditioned, especially from behind, but from the front as well, he was harder, his legs especially were a lot fuller, so if he was like that at the Mr. Olympia, he most likely would have won the show, however, that wasn't the case, why? Well, in my opinion, I think it's very obvious, it's because he did two shows, two major shows in a year, and it's very difficult to pick twice, to be 100% twice in a year. Now, the other thing that we gotta talk about is the timing of this announcement. He announced this one week after the Mr. Olympia. He did not announce this one week out of the Arnold Classic, the way Nick Walker did it, for example, this year, the way Nick Zill did it so many times. He did it the proper way. Yeah, I know, he promised he was gonna do it and he pulled out, but he has the right to do that. I mean, he did it uh, the right way, on time, he wasn't on the official list, he didn't start prepping and then pull out. He realized that if he wants to win the Mr. Olympia again, it's probably for the best if he focuses solely on the Mr. Olympia, tries to improve and come in better, bigger, with better conditioning, be more fresh when he preps the next time, and I think it's absolutely the right move. Now... Could he win the Arnold Classic this year? We all know that Samson is doing it as well. Is that the reason why he pulled out? Because he got scared of Samson? I mean, I don't know, it's possible. Since it was so close to the Mr. Olympia, in points at least, I didn't see it that way. I don't think it was close, but since the points are saying that, a couple of judges, uh, a lot of judges actually thought that Hadi was supposed to win the Mr. Olympia. Since it was that close, anybody could have won the Arnold Classic between Hadi and Samson. Andrew Jack is also doing it for now. Maybe Derek Lunsford jumps in as well. Maybe Nick Walker, who knows? But as of right now, Samson is definitely the favorite. And if Hadi did it, it would be a battle. Any one of these two guys could have won the show. I mean, we don't know if Samson is going to be able to repeat this conditioning. This is basically the only time he brought the conditioning that was good enough to beat guys like Hari and Derek. So we don't know if he can actually repeat that. And also, he needs to be able to peak uh, twice. I mean, uh, Arnold Classic is in only like six months from now. But Samson is kind of used to competing very often. Now, granted, so far, he wasn't really coming in condition. So his body wasn't that stressed. He was never at 100%. And even here at the Mr. Olympia, he wasn't at 100%. He was maybe at like, let's say, 85, maybe 90% of his maximum potential in terms of conditioning. So I think he can probably repeat the same thing. If he was as ripped as Hardy was uh, at the Arnold Classic, then I don't know if he would be able to repeat that, but this kind of conditioning, I'm sure he can do that. I'm pretty sure he can do, he can pull that kind of conditioning like every year for the next who knows how many years. And as long as he does that against these guys that are here today battling against him, 
he's most likely going to win against them because he's just that good, you know, muscularity, uh, structure, size-wise, but, you know, if, if somebody else shows up who is just as big, but with better conditioning, then he needs to work on improving it even more. But as of right now, he is the favorite to win the Mr. Olympia, even next year. And with Hardy out of Arnold Classic, Samson is going to win that. I'm pretty sure about that. All right, so like I said, Andrew Jack is going to be doing the Arnold Classic. How well can he do over there? Is there a possibility of him beating Samson Dauda? No. A short and a simple answer, no. I don't think Andrew is really even close to Samson Daura, definitely not as close as I thought he would be before this is Mr. Olympia, and like, it's not just that he was off with conditioning and this and that, it's also because you can see a lot of weakness in his physique, a lot of gaps that he needs to improve in the next, um, I don't know, a couple of years. So, in Tyler Mannion's recap of the Mr. Olympia, he also criticized Andrew Jacked. And with this one, he did not hold back. He basically ripped Andrew Jack apart. He basically criticized all of the poses. Every single pose was done in a wrong way. He was not conditioned. He didn't improve what he needed to improve. Let me actually show you guys what Tyler said. A short version of it. So he goes and he analyzes every single pose. And he finds flaws in every single one. So go ahead and check out the whole video. But let me show you the highlights real quick. Andrew on Friday definitely wasn't conditioned enough. You know, I judged him myself in Texas. I think he brought a more impressive look to Texas. He was even lacking the detail in the separation that he normally has through his abs and midsection. He needs deeper separation from the front and the legs. He really, really needs size to his side leg. He really needs to work on posing a lot. He can still improve on his legs from the back and the hamstrings as well. He, a lot of posing work, I think, needs to be done for him. So basically what Tyler said is that Andrew was lacking details in the quads from the front. His abs weren't as good as they usually are. Uh, his hamstrings need to come up. He needs to be just thicker from the side. He needs to hit the back double bicep and back last spread a different way. Most muscular as well. Of course, the side poses. So, overall, Tyler Mannion was not impressed with uh, what Andrew Jack brought to the Mr. Olympia. Uh, was he that uh, far off from his best? I would say he was at like, uh, I don't know, 85% of what he brought to the Texas Pro stage. But when it comes to Mr. Olympia, guys, I mean, who did he have at the Texas Pro? A couple of guys who aren't even qualified for the Mr. Olympia. At the Mr. Olympia, against the top guys, yeah, he definitely needs a lot of, a lot of work. Posing work and improvements in muscularity, so I don't know how much sense does it make for him to do the Arnold Classic. I think if he focused on the Mr. Olympia and did a qualifier, just like uh, this year, like Texas Pro, one of the later shows, and qualifies easy and actually focuses on bringing 100% for the Mr. Olympia, I think that's the best uh, possible outcome for him. But at least he's gonna give us uh, a show, the Arnold Classic. It's gonna be probably a comparison between uh, Samson and Andrew. Uh, maybe if Martin Fitzwater jumps in, maybe he's gonna be top two. Hardy is not doing it. I doubt that Derek is gonna do it, or Nick Walker. But even if Andrew places like 40 at the Arnold Classic, I think they're gonna just uh, put him next to Samson at the Arnold Classic. They won't do it at the Mr. Olympia, but at the Arnold Classic, I think we're gonna see those two guys compared because it's fun, it's for a show. Now, the other thing about Andrew Jack that I wanted to show you guys is uh, his trainer, who had some really interesting things to say uh, about Andrew Jack at the Muscle Discord YouTube channel when he did an interview. Uh, it's Chris Psycho Lewis. You guys know that he's uh, Andrew's trainer, but his coach is uh, Chris Asito. And these two guys are basically a team. It's not just that uh, Chris Psycho Lewis is training him. He's also, I think, uh, involved in the decision-making process. So let me show you what uh, Chris Psycho Lewis had to say. We failed, we failed Andrew. We failed him. That, no, both. Not just Asito. Both. The team decided to go the other way and that's not what they asked no so that's why it's my fault i should have said no it's not happening i should have put my foot down and i should have said now just now i haven't talked to chris but i did speak to andrew yeah we have spoke because i would fire us if i was andrew 
All right, very interesting. If you guys want to check out the whole video, go to Muscle Discord YouTube channel. You can check it out. You can watch the whole thing if you want. I can play it uh, here. But that's an interesting part where he says that Chris Asito basically went for, I think he went for a fuller and bigger look instead of going for more conditioning, which is what the judges told them Andrew needs to bring. And Chris Psycho Lewis uh, didn't think it was the right call, but he agreed with uh, Chris Asito because, you know, at some point they need to agree. They can't just argue and, you know, have different opinions but he regrets doing that so basically he blames Chris Asito for failing Andrew Jack and uh, you know him failing as well for not uh, saying anything but is his job really to argue with the coach no so he didn't fail anybody Chris Asito is the one who failed Andrew if what uh, Chris Cyclois is saying is true if he went for a bigger and fuller look instead of for conditioning and as Chris Cyclois says he should fire them and maybe he should fire Chris Asito. I don't know. I mean, they're constantly failing every Mr. Olympia so far. I don't know how much is it Andrew's fault, actually. We know that he had that ab uh, issue and that he was uh, messed up mentally, as he said. So maybe he wasn't uh, fully committed to the whole thing. Maybe he wasn't doing everything he needed to do. I don't know. But, you know, there is the guy from the camp, right from the horse's mouth. We can hear that it was Chris Asito who failed Andrew Jack, because he chased something else and it backfired, it wasn't the right call. He was bragging on RX Muscle that Andrew Jack has a big side chest, that he is over 300 pounds, this and that, but did he bring him in conditioned? No, no. If Andrew Jack went to, let's say, uh, Stefan Kinzel, for example, or Honey Rambert, or Samson's wife. I mean, seriously, if he did something else, maybe he would actually bring the conditioning of the Mr. Olympia for once, and if he did that, maybe he would place ahead of Martin, maybe even ahead of Derek Lansford. I don't see him higher than top three, at least this year, but he could have been better for sure, and he probably could have placed better. But it is what it is. You guys tell me down below, what do you think? All right, and finally, we got something also very interesting. It was actually posted five days ago. I don't know how I didn't catch this, but Mofuda, one of the Olympians, who placed, I think, one spot before the last spot, so he wasn't that last. He beat one guy. I think he beat one guy, uh, Bruno Santos. I think Bruno Santos was last place. Correct me if I'm wrong. But, uh, like, nobody really had huge expectations from Mofuda at the Mr. Olympia. This is his first Mr. Olympia. He's a young guy. He only won a pro show once earlier this year. He won Chicago, and then at the next show, he lost already to John De La Rosa. And John De La Rosa is also not in a conversation for top 10 at the Mr. Olympia. So, nobody really had huge expectations from Mofuda at his first Mr. Olympia. But he apparently had a lot bigger expectations from himself. Because this is what he says in his caption of this post. He says, a day to forget. I don't want to see how I looked or what happened. I don't want to remember any part of today. I wasn't myself and I wasn't the version I wanted to represent at my first Mr. Olympia. But what I will definitely do is move forward and work on coming back again. But next time won't be like this. I might not compete next year or maybe I will. I'm not sure yet. But since that day, I haven't slept or eaten anything outside of my diet and I won't. I was back in the gym the very next day. I will do anything I can and more to make sure that this day never happens again. Wow, wow, huge words, a day to forget, I mean, the guy got to the Mr. Olympia stage, and he didn't place that last, and he thinks that this is the day to forget, I mean, he probably should have just relaxed a little, and just enjoyed his experience, and not have huge expectations from the first Mr. Olympia, especially like at his age, at his level of um, uh, career, at this point of his career, I mean, he just won a pro show first time in his life, uh, this year, last year, he was placing like fifth, so, what did he expect, man? And why is he so disappointed? I mean, it's kind of cool to see that he has high expectations from himself, but come on. First Mr. Olympia, he doesn't need to feel like this. He shouldn't feel like this. He should have been just focused on enjoying the moment and experiencing the first Mr. Olympian. You know, love it, because it was an amazing production. But yeah, I guess if you place that low, I mean, how happy can you be? I mean, how many of us guys who are training and, and bodybuilding and competing, how many of us would trade place with him in a second just to be on the Mr. Olympia stage and not in classic, but in open? You know, it's crazy where he got, how far he reached. 
but he's so disappointed. I mean, let's hope he does better next year, but, you know, still being there, I think it's a huge achievement. He shouldn't feel that way. Anyways, guys, tell me what do you think about whichever part of this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, stay tuned, subscribe to this channel. And if you guys are looking for a coach who is not crazy expensive as the other top coaches, but can also get you in very good shape, myself, you can DM me on Instagram, you will get my number, and I'm very, very up to date, I answer to your messages very, very quickly, I'm always there, basically, so guys, if you're looking for something like that, DM me, thank you guys so much, again, for watching the video, subscribe to this channel, see you soon, guys, all the best, and bye-bye.